Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to take a look at some of the best single player story rich experiences that you can play on the Xbox series. Really I'd say as gaming has evolved throughout the years as an art form, it's really become one of the best ways to tell a story. Now a part of that is because gaming offers a unique way to experience stories. We can interact with these beloved characters, these completely unique universes. And not only can we relate to these characters and their motivations, but we can also insert ourselves into a story that we, we can't quite do in other forms of entertainment. I, I think we sometimes forget just how special gaming actually is. But we are in an era where some of these game developers, they, they've really mastered storytelling while also giving us a fun experience to play and interact with. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some of these great single player story rich experiences that you can play right now on your Xbox Series X or S. Of course, I talked about PlayStation a few weeks ago, so you can go check that out if you want. But today we're going to focus on Xbox. In fact, we're going to take a look at 15 different games, maybe an extra recommendation here or there. But I do have one rule for just list purposes. In this video, I'm strictly going to focus on native Xbox Series games, meaning that we're not going to talk about backwards compatible games today. So just got to keep that in mind going forward. But with all that said, let's just go and jump right into it. So to start off this list, I have Immortality, which is a game unlike anything that you have ever played before. Now, admittedly, this game won't be for everybody, as it's more of a unique narrative experience than just your typical game. But if you're looking for a good story, that's exactly what you're going to get when it comes to Immortality. In this game, you follow the story of a young actress who's gone missing. You then get access to three of her films that were never released, and your job is to watch those and just kind of piece things together to understand the mystery behind her disappearance. Ultimately, though, as you piece things together, you find a masterfully told story with just fantastic acting. Again, this is a unique experience combining games with almost this interactive movie experience. Now, things do start off a little slow, but it won't take long before you start finding yourself engrossed as you dive into to its many, many layers. And next up here I have Hades, which might surprise some people. You don't typically think of roguelikes when talking about good story-driven games, but that's where Hades differs because it does have a very rich story with some amazingly written characters that always, always has you coming back for more. Essentially, you play as Zagreus, the son of Hades, and then he sets out to escape the underworld and his father's rule. In order to do that, Zagreus will go room to room and fight off the many enemies in his way. But if you die, you'll then have to start back at the beginning. This, though, is where Hades becomes a true masterpiece, though, because not only does it have this incredibly addictive combat with layers upon layers of strategy, but when you die, it almost feels as if you're rewarded because the story itself is just so interesting. The characters in the universe, they're so captivating. So when you die in this game, you get to explore its universe just a little bit more by talking to the various characters, and their relationships with you will progress with each failed attempt. So really from a gameplay standpoint, and yes, a story standpoint, Hades without a doubt is a true, true masterpiece. Next up here I have Tales of Arise, which is a beautiful action RPG where you have to work with your team to pull off these smartly timed combos. And it's just a ton of fun to play. I mean, we might as well just go get that out of the way. This game is a lot of fun, but that's in addition to its well-told story. It does have this really interesting story about a slave that feels no pain, and then he meets up with this more privileged person in the world, but she can't touch people because her touch causes pain. It's this contrast, though, that makes for a really interesting and electrifying dynamic between the two, both in how they play together, but also their polar opposite views of the world. And then it only gets more engaging as other characters join your party throughout its enticing campaign. Now here I have the Forgotten City, which, I mean, this game took me by a complete surprise. I kept hearing about how good this game was, so one day I just decided I'm going to go into this one blind, and, and once I did, I mean, I, I never turned back. This game's narrative and setting is just so unique in how it's all laid out. On the surface, the Forgotten City is a mystery adventure game of exploration and deduction, but essentially you find yourself transported to a cursed Roman city where if one person sins, the whole city then will die. You, though, for some reason are stuck in this time loop, which allows you to uncover the mystery and why the city is cursed, and then you have to kind of find a way to save the few civilians that are left. It's not necessarily an action-packed game per se, 
but it does have a unique and gripping narrative that really is going to just engross you into its world. And here is yet another unique game being Pentiment. Honestly, I think a lot of people might rank this one even higher, I mean, because it, it is that good, but it really just kind of depends on the person. This is more of a niche style of game, which I think is immediately evident when it comes to its stylized art style and its historical setting. It does play out like a narrative adventure style of game, think of a point and click adventure where you make choices that impacts the world. You do play in the 16th century where you find yourself in the midst of a murder investigation. It does start off a little slow and everything, but if you're looking for a rich story driven experience, if you like history, or if you just want a good mystery, this is a game that at the very least, I think you need to try. It's not necessarily going to be for everybody, but it is one of those games that if you like it, well, there's a good chance that you might end up loving it. When it was first announced that Eidos Montreal, the studio behind the popular Deus Ex series, was working on Guardians of the Galaxy, it sounded like an interesting combo on paper. You had this highly talented studio working on a popular Marvel-based IP, and well, it did actually end up winning the Game Awards Best Narrative in 2021. Now, I think that already kind of speaks to the quality that we're talking about here. It's a great single player experience with fleshed out characters. It can be humorous, it can be surprisingly emotional, and it's also, most importantly, I mean, it's quite simply fun. Now, it is linear in structure, but its level design is top notch with some really creative environments. What I'll kind of say about this game is that if you like the Guardians of the Galaxy IP, definitely play this game, but even if you don't, I'd still recommend giving this one a try just because it really is just a good game. Okay, so for this next one, I actually have two different games here, both being interactive narrative adventure style games where your choices impact its story. But this first one here, I mean, this one just absolutely took me by surprise as it really executes those high tension, high risk moments just perfectly in my opinion, being as dusk falls. As you can see, this game has this beautiful, unique art style to it, and that beauty leaks right into its story as well. You play as various characters across two different families, all with their own internal struggles and problems, and as their worlds intersect with one another through a robbery gone wrong, you start to connect with these characters on a more personal level. You start to learn a little bit about their backstory, and, and you really feel for them. Honestly, this one quietly might be one of my own personal favorites on this list, just from a, a, a story perspective. It's only about six hours long, but it, it's well written, and it has a great, just absolutely fantastic story. If anything, I'd say that this one is underappreciated, and I definitely recommend checking it out. If you do like this genre, however, I also had to include Life is Strange True Colors. Much like other entries in the franchise, it once again combines supernatural abilities with a down-to-earth story and a compelling mystery. In True Colors, though, you play as Alex Chen, which has psychic empathy powers that allows her to read and manipulate emotions, and that plays a major role in how you talk to the different characters in its universe and how you can impact its story. Both of these games, though, whether that be As Dusk Falls or Life is Strange True Colors, I mean, easy, easy recommends if you're looking for a good story. Now, one of the more innovative games on this list is Deathloop. This is a creative first-person shooter, and actually now a first-party Xbox game, where you play as an assassin stuck in a Deathloop. And in order to break the loop, you'll need to assassinate eight different targets in quick succession. But if you fail, the loop then resets. That, though, is really where the fun begins, as it gives you, the player, the creative freedom to discover the best method and the best route to take. And because of its just brilliant level design, I mean, this game is a pure joy to play. It also has an entertaining story, though, with some excellent voice acting. In the very first moment that you wake up in this game, just like the state of confusion, there's this mystery of why are you here and why am I dying and coming back to life? It, it really seems like everybody else knows what's going on except for you, and it immediately pushes you forward to uncover the quote-unquote death loop. Now, there's very few studios out there that are as good at making story-driven experiences as Remedy Entertainment. They've made some amazing single player games throughout the years, including Control Ultimate Edition. This is a very creative game in terms of its setting and gameplay. It's set in a building that quite literally shifts and morphs around you, making for some amazing set pieces, really some of the most memorable in gaming for that matter, and that also fits in perfectly with its gameplay. It is a 3D Metroidvania style of game where the protagonist has superhuman-like abilities, and as she unlocks new abilities and upgrades her morphing weapon, she can progress through its building even further. In terms of design, gameplay, and story, Control Ultimate Edition without a doubt is top of its class. 
Like I said, though, I am a big fan of Remedy. I mean, I, I've loved some other games in the past. So I'm also going to go ahead and recommend Alan Wake Remastered. Well, this game is a little bit on the older side of things. It does have a remaster available on the Xbox series. And if you like spooky, mysterious stories, well, Alan Wake is actually one of my all-time favorites. Plus, its sequel, Alan Wake 2, is coming soon as well. Resident Evil is one of those franchises that kind of defies its genre. And what I mean by that is that it appeals to people beyond your typical horror fan. Yes, it can be spooky and everything, no doubt about it, but it also has an enticing story, memorable characters and villains, and also strong gameplay that keeps you on the edge of your seat. So with all that in mind, Resident Evil Village Gold does all that and more. In this one, you play as Ethan Winters searching for his daughter, and in order to do so, you'll find yourself fighting off the likes of werewolves, vampires, among other terrifying creatures to do so. Yeah, I have to hand it to Ethan Winters. He deals with a lot in this game, and he handles it very well. Now, if you've actually played through this game, you might understand what I'm talking about there, but however, it does mix in a good amount of horror alongside its action style of gameplay, giving you kind of the best of both worlds. But thanks to its smart level design and the way the world interconnects, it's a slow terror that builds up as you explore each new locale. The thing about the Gold Edition, though, is that it did add value by including a new third-person camera option in case you prefer that over first-person. Then on top of that, you also get the Winter's Expansion that has you play as an entirely different character and a completely new campaign that also plays quite a bit different. Now, I'm not going to explain why for spoiler-related reasons, but Resident Evil Village is a crazy ride all the way through. Now, I've said it a hundred times on this channel, but I firmly do believe that there's not many games out there that are as good as the Yakuza series when it comes to cinematic, story-driven style of games. The narratives in these games are just so thrilling with twists and turns on every corner, and I mean, they just know how to keep you at the edge of your seat. But then at the same time, it can shock you and make you cry. They, they, they are just a masterclass when it comes to good storytelling, but they also tie that in nicely with its atmospheric Japanese cities and its over-the-top gameplay. These really are just absolutely excellent games, top to bottom, with lots of things to do, as you can also freely explore their dense cities. Now, there are two different styles of games here, though. So, in terms of native Xbox Series games, you do have Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is actually the seventh installment in the series, and this one is more of a traditional turn-based JRPG, whereas Judgment, which is a spin-off where you play as kind of like this detective it's got your more traditional beat-em-up style of gameplay similar to the first six games. Now, if you are new to the series, I would recommend playing Judgment as it does have a completely different story and characters. But you can still technically, technically, jump into Yakuza Like a Dragon with no previous knowledge of the series. For that matter, even though this video is focusing on native Xbox series games, I'm just going to go ahead and recommend the entire Yakuza series, Yakuza 0 all the way up to Yakuza Like a Dragon, they are all really just amazing. And here I have Persona 5 Royal because yes, it is finally available on Xbox, you know, Sega and Atlas, they, they did a thing. But I mean, this is easily one of the very best turn-based JRPGs to ever exist. Seriously, I mean, if you like this genre, just go out and play this game right now. But the way this game works is that you play as your everyday student that was wrongfully shipped off to a new school as a delinquent for intervening with a crime. Here it then becomes more or less this social sim where you manage your time, bond with different characters, and form relationships. But then there's this parallel world where you dive into morally disturbed minds and then steal their hearts. A change of heart, if you will. In this world, it then becomes more of this dungeon-crawling RPG. This is where you fight and collect demons and uncover the mysterious happenings that intersects with the human world. It does actually cover some serious and dark subjects, so just kind of keep that in mind. But there's some nice twists along the way, and, and thanks to the bonds that you form with its wide cast of characters, it really makes for an unforgettable story. A little bit of a warning here, though, is that this game, however, is quite a time investment, as it will take you more than 100 hours to complete. So just a little bit of heads up on that, but I will say that I think that those 100 plus hours will be worth it for a lot, and I mean a lot of people. Now, to round off the top three here, I have Xbox's flagship title, Halo Infinite. Now, admittedly, this game takes a little bit of flack when it comes to its multiplayer and 343's slow progression and getting content out, and okay, that's, that's fair enough. But in terms of its story campaign, they knocked it out of the park with Halo Infinite. For the first time ever, Halo is an open world game but this new direction, I mean, it, it just feels right. Mechanically, Halo feels as good as it ever has, maybe even better. And the world itself, 
is fun to explore. It's relatively easy to traverse as you have a handy dandy grappling hook now that basically makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. But what really stands out about this game is that it also has one of the better stories within the Halo franchise. There was some true emotional beats this time around and, and the entire cast from Master Chief to the new characters were phenomenally written. And because of that, it adds a new layer to Master Chief's character that makes him feel just a little bit more relatable. I would actually rank this as one of Halo's better campaigns just all around, but more so, I also think it's just one of the better single player games available right now, period. And here at the number two spot, and quite honestly, I could have easily put this one at the number one spot because it really is that good. And yes, I'm talking about Psychonauts 2. Now you don't typically think about 3D platformers when talking about good story rich experiences, but that's where Psychonauts 2 differs. It's really a special game in this sense. Yes, it's this insanely creative game with top notch level design. Honestly, probably one of the most creative games that I've ever played just period. And, and it also has some of the best 3D platforming in any game ever made. But on top of all that, it also legitimately has a good story. It's got these quirky characters that you just kind of immediately like, and it might come off as a little goofy at times, but there's actually layers to its story. As a Psychonaut, what you do in this game is that you have to dive into people's minds, and as you do that, you see things through their eyes. You might see their fears, you might see their anxieties, their hopes and dreams. You see these different things from their point of view. It then becomes surprisingly deep as it touches on things like mental illnesses, though it does this in a way where it's subtle, powerful, yet still amusing all at the same time. It's got a strikingly even balance that just, I mean, it, it is just so well put together. So I think when you pair all of that with its creativity, its fun gameplay, its lovable characters, and its well-realized world, which by the way, graphically looks good on the Xbox series, well, you get an instant classic. I mean, really, truly. Psychonauts 2 is a special game. Just, just go out and play it, please. And here at the number one spot, I have A Plague Tale Requiem. This is more of your traditional cinematic story-driven game that fans just love so much, but this one really stands out as it feels like it's just kind of its own thing. Now, what I mean by that is that it has this unique atmosphere to it, and it has also this unique gameplay style that focuses on stealth-based gameplay. We don't really get a lot of stealth-based games anymore, but even then, a Plague Tale still kind of separates itself in that genre because you do play as a young, vulnerable girl trying to protect her sickly little brother in a rat-infested world. So you're not like some super secret agent spy or something like that with all of these different skills. Now, with that said, you do have a lot of tools at your disposal. From a slingshot, you have a crossbow, among several alchemy-based additives. But you'll need to smartly manage these items to navigate around the various, more threatening enemies than yourself. Now, with that said, it can be a dark and grim world. It can be very emotional. But just, just kind of know this. The story is absolutely gripping from beginning to end. Like, like, seriously, the further you dive into this game, the better it gets. And by the end, you're just kind of like, wow, mind absolutely blown. I will say this, though. If you are interested in a Plague Tale Requiem, do kind of keep in mind that this is a sequel to a very story-driven game. So I, I would recommend checking out the first game out as well being A Plague Tale Innocence, which, by the way, is also absolutely fantastic. Anyways, though, that's it for this list, but hopefully you found a couple games that you, you might like to go out and play yourself. I mean, we did talk about 15 games today, or, well, there, there were some other recommendations along the way, but hopefully you had fun with this video. Anyways, though, as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, Thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.